nationalists. You've seen off the rain, so the unionists should be easy for us. Now, I want to start with a complaint, and it's not just about the rain. This is Glasgow, of course. But we are in the historic place of Glasgow Green. And here, the 1820 martyrs rallied the radical movement. The great John McLean protested against imperialist wars. And here is where the suffragettes met. So... So my complaint is, given that we're all here at this historic place, how dare the UK establishment have another event going down on in London at the same time to steal our thunder? <laughs> A blatant attempt to steal our publicity, but while they've got the biased BBC covering every waking, sleeping moment of that coronation, We've got Independence Live in Glasgow. Yeah. Because, fellow nationalists, there's a difference between London and Glasgow. They represent the English pomp, and we represent the Scottish circumstance. And today, while Republicans peacefully protesting in London are being arrested for holding a contrary view, we're being asked to swear, to swear allegiance to King Charles III. Well, we are the people, we are sovereign, and we say no. Now consider the speeches that we've just heard. We heard from Anne who was speaking for the NHS. The cause of Scotland is the cause of the National Health Service. We heard from Jim speaking for the trade unionists. The cause of Scotland is the cause of the workers. And we heard from Mohammed who was speaking about human rights. And the cause of Scotland is the cause of justice and peace the world over. And here at Glasgow Green it is the people, the people who have rallied for these causes over centuries. Now the Scottish national movement is as old as Scotland itself. And I am proud, really proud, to be a Scottish Asian woman and proud to chair the Arba party. But I know, I know that this movement is bigger, much, much bigger than any political party. And when Scotland is threatened and Scotland is being threatened, we unite, we rise, we fight, and we win. Now last week, the Secretary of State against Scotland, Alistair Jack, aye, he wore this fancy uniform to protect the stone of destiny the symbol of our Scottish sovereignty, a bit rich coming from him, perhaps even richer than he is himself. But it was people like Jack who allowed it to be stolen from Scotland in the first place. They had a Scots phrase back then for people like Alistair, Tomb Tabard, empty coats. And the truth is, Union jobs like Alistair have been stealing Scotland's assets for generations, in fact, for centuries. And now Jack, oh, Jack's got his boots on. He said just a few days ago that the Scottish Parliament won't be allowed to prepare for independence. Well, I've got news for Alistair Jack Boots. This this movement can and will prepare for independence. <laughs> Alistair Jack, you cannot divide Scotland because this movement will unite. You cannot crush Scotland because this movement will rise. And I started by pointing out that in 1820, the Scots who rallied here 
were Baird, Hardy and Wilson. The martyrs from 1820, and they marched and rallied under a banner that said, Scotland free or a desert. It's now our job, our job, your job, this movement's job, to rally under a new banner, all under one banner, together to unite this movement and take us to victory. And that flag only now needs to say Scotland free because Scotland will be free and Scotland wants independence now. Thank you.